Welcome everybody, this is Wendy Makes Art and tonight is Art Tool Tip Tuesday. That's a lot of A-T-T-T -T -T action going on. My name is Wendy and I am your host. We are going to make zigzag books tonight. I'm really excited. I hope that you enjoy this episode. We're going to do a couple things. You're wondering why there is an iceberg sitting on the table in front of me. And I'm going to show you pretty, pretty shortly here. So uh, before I forget, little things, don't forget to like and subscribe, which I think you just can subscribe to follow me or follow me. And Friday nights, I have Friday night dinos. So if you want to improve your drawing, if you want to just watch me draw, if you want to see different techniques to paint, different materials, that's a fun show to watch too. And I'm on Friday nights from 6 to 8 p.m. We spend an hour drawing and an hour painting. And this Friday, I will be painting on black watercolor paper. Pretty excited. Should be a good episode. So with that, I'm gonna get started. And let's see, I'll move this a little bit out of the way. I'm gonna start with what you need in order to make your own zigzag book. We are gonna end up in the end, let me show you an example of what you can buy in the store. Penny Mula makes these fabulous little books and they're heavy, nice 140 pound watercolor paper and you can journal in them all different ways. I, went on a trip to Tucumcari on Historic 66 and I added a sticker in here. I have some writing. We did a nocturne. My best friend and I painted a nocturne. Happy dancers over there. I love it. Thank you, Team Cheer in the corner. This has a fun Klein's Corner sticker. This one I did the fastest drawing I could, took a photo, and then finished painting it later because I said when we were sitting there, I'm like, I've got to get this truck and trailer. He is only going to be parked there for a short time. And sure enough, that vehicle moved so fast. Uh, this is outside the legal tender in Lamy. And this is the oldest church in Santa Fe. So just some, some really fun ideas. Of course, you can do all kinds of different things. And I'm going to show you that. Materials that you need to get started with your own book making. Oh, real quick, let me show you. Here's another example. Now, I made this one, and this is what we're going to be doing tonight. So I used watercolor paper. Here's, here is a painting that I painted on the airplane with it. I'm a little more of a painter. You can do anything. You can do little notes. You could do color swatches, material swatches. This I was up high and painted the tables looking down down below and then the rest of it I have to finish but we work both of these and I have little notes on what I want to do with this particular book and I just thought it would show you I used fabric on the cover of this one we're going to test some different materials out with this project tonight as well materials the basic materials that you need is a cutting mat. You're going to need a cutting mat to cut with. So we're going to start with a cutting mat. You need a piece of paper. For demonstration purposes on screen, I'm using a smaller piece of paper and it can be anything that you want. Remember you want it to hold up to folding and you also want to let it hold up to whatever medium you plan to work on with it. So if you're just going to do pencil and drawing, it can be a lighter medium, but make sure that it's going to be tough enough for wear and tear and you're dragging it out and opening it up and closing. I'm also going to show you tonight a fun way for you to take old artwork or pre-plan and draw out something or just make marks on a big piece of paper and then chop that up. You can recycle some of your artwork. This is an iceberg painting that I would not show anywhere but I'm going to chop it up and sacrifice it and show you some fun things that you can do with it. So you need a paper. You're going to need a cutting tool. I love, this brand is called Olfa. It's O-L-F-A. 
And I love these cutting tools. They have snap off blades. And the safest way to snap your blade off is to have a blade disposal unit. And it looks like this. This is an Ulfa blade disposal unit. You stick the top of your blade in here and you can snap it. And then you break it right off safely. It drops into the container. Mine, I, I don't know how I did it, but I broke it. So I'm all taped up. But you snap it in the container and you leave those blades in there until it's full. You need a pencil to mark where you're going to cut. You need a ruler, maybe two rulers. If you're working on a large 22 by 30 sheet, you need a really long ruler. Now, I brought just a 15 inch ruler to show you for the sake of showing you how to measure and cut if you don't have a long enough ruler to go all the way across your paper. Ideally, I would recommend having a long enough ruler to go all the way across your paper. Then you're gonna need some kind of mat board, cardboard. If you finish a sketchbook and you know that back hard cardboard backing that a lot of them have, or if you finish a watercolor block, you can use that backing board that's in a watercolor block. This is just inexpensive mat board. I have bought for another project a whole box of it and I use it for all kinds of stuff. I don't mat stuff with it. I usually end up uh, just using this for other projects. Love the chickens. The chickens are hysterical. Those are so fun. It is chick season and our chickens, we have chickens. Our chickens are laying lots of eggs. The paper cutting board, something to cut with, pencil, mat board. You're gonna need some kind of glue or adhesive. I brought neutral pH line coat adhesive. You can also use Elmer's Craft fabric glue, and at some point I'm going to test in the next week. Just regular Elmer's glue. I don't know how archival that is, so I haven't gone there. I usually use something archival. I also am going to test tonight soft gel gloss, so gel medium. We're going to test this tonight on one of the books we make and see how well that works. I usually have a brush and some water to spread the glue out and also little extra pieces of mat board. I'll chop some little pieces off and show you that I use to scrape and spread matte medium out. And then you need something for the cover for your books. This could be paper, it can be fabric. I brought up, I have uh, some special fancy paper. This is really cool. There's little tigers in there. Do you see the tigers? I absolutely love this paper. So I'm going to cover one of my books with tigers. And then I also have this fabric, which I got at a yard sale. I think I wrestled my mom to the ground in order to get my hands on this fabric. But I absolutely love this fabric. So I'm going to cover one with this fabric. And then I have some cut up pieces to show you. You also need, if you want to close your book, like this one has a ribbon built right in that wraps around to the front, ties it closed, put a big bow on it. So, so if you want to close it with a ribbon, you're going to glue, glue this into the substrate, and I'll show you how to do that. So if you need that, if doing that, you need some ribbon. And if you're going to do what, what I'm going to show you with experimenting with taking old paintings or things that you have and doing some mark making or even taking a sheet and doing some mark making before you cut it up, you're going to need some stuff to work with. So whatever you feel comfortable, I just grabbed some stuff. I have some metallic watercolors. I grabbed neo colors, a little set of neo colors to color with, and I have a watercolor pencil. So we'll play a little bit with that and I'm going to show you what to do with that. Paper towels are a good idea and I think that pretty much sums it up. It sounds like a lot of materials. It doesn't look too bad once it's on the table. Now the first one I'm going to do is take this piece of artwork that I don't like. Just lay that out there. 
And I like on my cutting mat, oh, and you need some, let's throw this in real quick. You need some extra pieces of paper for when you lay your fabric and your glue down. So this will help you a lot. So make sure you have some stuff like this. So this old painting, and I looked at it and I thought, oh, it was, it was something done during Plain Air Live with Eric Rhodes a few years back and an iceberg floating. I wasn't real inspired by the artwork, but I thought, oh, I'm in a group, I'll paint it. How fun! I am going to first kind of look at this and I want to go a long ways because I want enough room for my book to fold up and have more than just two pages. And I thought it might be really fun to chop the edges off first of all. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna line this up. And usually if I, I know this paper is square, so I can trust that if I put my ruler down here, I'm gonna get rid of this bottom edge. And then I line my ruler, by, which is cork backed by the way. I did not bring my cutting glove. I do have a cutting glove, which I would highly recommend. And I left it downstairs in my other studio. That will keep it. You put it on one hand, Michael Jackson hand. So you put your glove, cutting glove on your left hand if you're right-handed. If you're cutting with this hand, it's very rare that you're going to chop this hand. You won't, you won't chop this hand because you're cutting with it. The fingers you're going to chop are most likely your thumb and index. Not fun, I've done it. So, there you go. So chop that edge off. And now I want to figure out how many books can I get out of this? I think this would make a great cutting mark. And if I measure, I could do a little three inch book, which is super cute. If I cut, right here. So I'm going to take this guy and because I'm, I'm normally I would stand. So when I'm cutting I stand to cut. But since I'm demoing I'm just going to do it a little backwards and yes I will try to be careful with that sharp blade. Now this is kind of cool. It doesn't have anything on the side. So we have one plain side, we have one side just like this. And then if I take this sheet and I do the same thing, I'm gonna chop off, first I'll square it up, and I'm gonna chop that edge off. I'm gonna try to make it as square as I possibly can. It does not look very square, does it? That is not very square. We're gonna wing it. I just have to make sure that my long sides remain parallel. I'm gonna cut this side off right here. And then I'm gonna line it up to this bottom edge and this one I'm going to make five inches maybe, make a long book. We'll just do something a little different. Now I could get a little bitty two inch and four inch book out of this one. And you should really look at your paper. Yeah, we're going to do that. Look at your paper and see what you can come up with, how many books you can make out of it. Will it be fun? I'm just going to. Chop this one right here. If you do not chop all the way, don't agonize about it. Just rock it back and forth. We'll rock it and then lay it down and gently pull with your hand on this side and pull this way. Love all the hearts. Oh, are those little, is that a, that's a kitty cat. That's a kitty cat love. All right. Now I'm gonna see how square this is. I'm gonna line up one side and the other side, and it's not too bad. That's, 
that's pretty good. And we're going to, we have a choice. We can leave these edges or we can cut them off. I'm going to go ahead and chop them because I know I can have an even set of inches in between. I'm just going to line this up. This is great. You'll notice I did not draw any lines yet. I just used my mat to square things and line things up. And then I use the lines on the mat to cut everything. And then here's this one. I like this like this and this. I do want this one two inches. So the first thing I'm going to do is square it and make the top and bottom parallel. They are not parallel. Watch. If I take this ruler, then you're going to see the top of my head. And I hold this over. Now, the top and the bottom are parallel, and it's exactly two inches. And I'm just going to tear that right there. Now I'm going to go in and go up and down. Chop this side off, flip it around, and for ease of measurements, I'm not going to go all the way to the edge where this is painted. I am going to go to the line on the mat and chop it. And so this is for another book, and I really like these pieces by themselves. I think they're, they're a lot of fun as pieces by themselves. That's kind of funny, and you'll see what happens when we fold them up. This little guy, same thing. I want to first make sure that the top and the bottom are parallel. Now they're not, they're, they're a little bit off. I'm gonna to try to fix it as best as I can. It's very close, but it will make me crazy. So I'm just lining these up and then I'm chopping that little edge, being careful not to cut my finger on camera. Do not want a Saturday Night Live skit going on tonight. And this one I just need to put the ruler in here a little bit. Hold it, I said, hold it, and it's so tiny, it's hard for this one to line up and chop off. There we go. Same thing, I'm going to line this up first on this side and chop this off, square it up. Line top and bottom, paying attention to where everything is lined up. Chop it. And then I'm going to turn this around and chop this side. And I'm going to make it even. So I don't want to have to measure weird, odd measurements. I'm just going with an even inches. All right. So we now have our three pieces to make three different books. And from here, the first thing that I do 
is I measure to get an idea of what I'm working with and if I have an even number or not. These are all 12 inches. That's nice because what happens is it makes it easy. I know it's three inches tall and it's 12 inches wide. So if I divide this up, I always start this way. I first fold it in half. Now to do this, I do not worry about squaring these edges because they may not be square. I match them as close as I can. What I want to do is watch this, the edges on the long side and make sure that they match up and aren't off kilter. And then press into the middle. Now this is a thicker, this is watercolor paper. This will be a little harder to fold. If you have a bone folder, that'll work. A butter knife might help you. And it will crack a little bit depending on the paper. Mine cracked just a little bit. If you have a softer paper, it won't crack as much. So I folded that. And then I open it back up. And I see how many inches I have. Now, from, and I measure from the center. Here is my center line, right there. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six on each side. I know I'm three inches tall. And so I'm just gonna do a really simple three by three little square book. And I'm going to take my pencil and I'm gonna mark a little notch at the three inch. And then I'm gonna go over here and mark a little notch. Remember, I'm measuring from the center. I'm not working from the edges, I'm going from the center. So I start at my center line, and then I go to the right and to the left, all right? So here we have, we're gonna do a fold, and we wanna make sure that we fold on our little line. There's one of two ways you can do this. This is a really heavy paper. I'm gonna take my dirty fingernail I was printmaking earlier today. And I'm gonna take my fingernail and just make a little dent so that I can match that up. The other thing I can do, there's my dent. I want to line, I know that the end of this goes in the center. I'm lining up my bottom. So these long edges, I'm really watching to make sure that they are lined up parallel on the top and the bottom. Then I bring my hand out and I press this. Remember I said, this paper will crack. This is a, a watercolor paper that isn't very soft. I'm not quite sure what it is, but it's a, it's a tough watercolor paper. It may have a lot of sizing in it. One more. Now this one, same thing. We can dent it where the little line is. And I'm folding these in the directions that they're going in the book. And I'm going to line up right to the top. And there we go. Look, we have a little book. Now, this is not going to be a big book. It's a little book. But it's still a book. Super fun. And the only thing that's really going to show in the middle is the rock. We have all of this side to work with. And I'll show you what happens with that. Same one here. If I'm taking this guy, I first fold it in half. This is a little two inch piece. And I'm paying attention to make sure I line the long sides up and I work my way back and fold it in half. I open it up, line the middle part on a line. And then this one, I can do two by two. So it can be a square or I could do two by three. We can make a long one here. We'll, since we just did a square one, we're gonna do a long one. So I'm going to fold this one just at the three inch mark and the three inch mark. My little finger in there to mark it. Bring this back over and make sure that I am lined up on these long sides. Turn it over, I can put my finger in here, hold it over, line it up, and we're lined up on the long sides. 
little mini book. Super cute. Little long book. Hey, you made it. Hi, Annie C. Hey, Humming Wolf. So glad you're here. Welcome. So I started out by taking a crappy watercolor painting and chopping it up because I wanted to show you that you could take some old artwork and then repurpose it if you want it. These have a blank side and then a painted side, which I can paint on top of. I can use different media. I can put stickers. I can write words across. There's a lot I can do with these. But all I did was just take a watercolor sheet and that was already painted on and I chopped it up. And then this is our last piece, which I thought had a lot of great potential. And do the same thing here. Is fold it in half. This one is four inches tall. And so we got to decide how do we want to split this up. It's my halfway part. Maybe we do a tall two inch book. So I can fold it here. I'm marking it the two inches from the center. Remember to go from the center. It helps everything line up better. If you, if you measure from the end, it's gonna be a little goofy. I don't know why it works like that, but I've done enough of these that I can say measure from the center. Fold back, line up, along this edge, press down. You will find that some papers work better than others. I'm gonna dent this edge, I'm gonna come over. Now this one gave me a little bit of trouble. I'm not real, real happy with how it folded, but I'm doing my best to force it into submission. And then this one, I'm just gonna come back and match it. See how well it lines up, pretty good. And I credit that to working from the center out. And then back on this one, and it too does not like that fold point for whatever reason. So I'm, I'm working from this on the spine of it and kind of pushing it back. You can score this. If you have a really thick paper, you could do a light score and make sure that you score it on the outside of the bend. So I could have scored this and it would have made my life a lot easier, but I didn't. Before we move on with this, I want to show you one more thing. Remember I said, I brought a piece of paper in that is bigger than my mat, my little cutting mat. It's also longer than my ruler. So I wanted to show you how to deal with that if you're doing something along that line. This is just drawing paper. You could do handwriting, ink drawings, simple stuff in this one, stickers, ephemera, would work really well with this one. Um, and it, you'll see how nice it is to fold. It's a really, really nice way to fold things. But I'm also gonna show you something else. You can cut this just like this, but if you're feeling wild and crazy and wanna do something fun, you can pre-junk up your paper to help inspire you or just Get yourself motivated so that you can look at a page. Sometimes a blank canvas is intimidating, but if you go in and throw some marks on it or a big wash on it, it's not as intimidating. So I'm just going to take, here we go. I'm going to take and I am going to scribble some color on this, both sides. Let's throw that in there. And I'm just gonna cut part of this one to show you what I'm doing and not make you watch all night. I wanna give you a really good feel for, for how, how to get started with making your own books.
This will be on my website at some point. I'm the worst about getting it over there. Or it'll be on website and YouTube or link to my YouTube. And I'll also have an instruction sheet. And that way you know all the materials you need and it'll kind of help guide it if you get lost in here. You can take some things like, these are uh, nail colors. And I'm just gonna throw some in here. And I'm gonna leave this dry for now. You could use wet media and then make sure it's flat, flatten it. Um, let it dry. I, I just don't wanna put totally wet media together here. So I'm gonna put some stuff in here. Now I didn't go all the way to the edges, so we'll chop an inch off. If I wanted to chop an inch off, I'm gonna come in here and use my pencil, measure up an inch. I might need my glasses. We're gonna get my glasses out for this one, gang. Don't I look smarter? So smart. That close-up vision hits me. And then I'm going about the middle and I'm measuring in an inch. I'll move this up so you all can see it better. And then I'm gonna go down here on this side and measure an inch. So I've got three points. I've got my edges and I have a midpoint. And because my ruler doesn't go all the way across, I need those guides. I got a little crooked. I'm only going to go to the midpoint. I'm cutting this edge off. And I'm coming over here. And I'm chopping this side. And then I'm going to get crazy and throw it on the floor. Because why not? Yes, I am mini you for sure, in so many ways. We're gonna go ahead and make this guy five inches tall. I'm gonna go in here and measure five inches. Five inches. Notice I'm going between six and one, it's still five inches. In between six and one. And then we're gonna chop this, this up, just like the other one. I mentioned this before, you may have missed it. I typically cut while I'm standing so that I have force down. So when I cut, I stand up, and then I'm looking down at everything. And it gives me a better, and I would typically cut with my ruler on my body side, not the other way around, like I was doing that goofy thing. It's because I couldn't see what I was doing. I stand up, hold the ruler down, and I chop it. And I, if you do not chop all the way through, do not panic. You can, now it was a little raggedy there. I'm gonna leave this one. And if I were making a fancy pants book that I was gonna use for myself or gift, I would go back in and just cut it a hair shorter to make sure it was perfect because I get a little crazy. Now this will fold beautifully. I'm gonna fold it in half and I'm gonna measure it. I wanna see how many inches we have. We have nine inches. We can work with nine inches. If I had measured this earlier and known that it would divide weirdly, I probably would have done something different. So I can divide it into twos and chop the ends off. I could do the math and mark it at 
the crazy math points. I could also just do a down and dirty fold. So I can take this, I lined it up, I can come to the middle, fold it, and then I can fold each of these halves. I'm lining up the top and the bottom. And this one, I'm looking for the crease. And line up the top and bottom. Now, you will have to go back and turn it then so that it folds correctly. And you'll see it's not quite, this one's going sideways. It's not quite on point as when you measure and carefully fold. But it gets the job done. We'll fold it over, come back over here, fold these up, turn it over, and there's my book. So fun, already designed zigzag book. The next thing you're going to do, so we've, you've cut your paper. Whatever paper you're working with, for, with, you cut it, you folded it. You now know what size you need with your mat board. All right? And I brought a couple scrap pieces of mat board in here. We'll take one of these in and make one. I think for sake of time, I'm just going to take this, this itsy bitsy one. And let's see if we can do a simple chopper up. Get her done. I also have ones. We're going to try matte medium with this and see what we can do with the matte medium. Now, I want my board slightly larger than this. And you need two, you need one for the back and one for the front. It's up to you how much room you want. I usually do not like to make them exactly spot on as a match to the edge. That just gives you room for gluing errors or something not working. So I like to bring this in and I'm gonna take my pencil and just make it a little wider here. You do not have to measure this. To make it perfect. If you're if you really want to, you can go with three-eighths of an inch extra to one half of an inch than your actual size. So if my book is two inches and I didn't want to do what I just did with eyeballing it, I would make it two and three-eighths by three and three-eighths for my mat board and just cut that size and cut two of them. This one I winged and I'm gonna show you what I do when I wing it. So I marked it, I guessed how, where to put my marks. I line this up on my mat board, take my handy dandy ruler and I line up to that line because I know this edge is square. And I chop it. And then I do the same thing for my vertical. I need a long square horizontal line. And then I chop it. Now we need two of these, so I cheat it. I will take my board. I will line it up so that it's on the, the edges. I sit them down. I put my cork ruler on it. Make sure they're married up. You could draw a line too. They may be a little off. And then I take my, my knife and I make sure that it's pushed in and lined up exactly one on top of each other. And I chop it. Done. We're going to use this as a scrap to spread glue, FYI. Then I turn it, 
Then I chop this side. Boom, just like that. So now we've got our little covers that our little book just fits right in. There's our covers. We need one more thing. We need a paper to make it really cool and unique or a fabric. So we have a choice. And let's see if I have enough of this to do this one. I think I, ooh, I'm running it pretty close on that one. I'm gonna take this fabric and we're gonna do some fabric. Because I think this will be nice. Yeah, this will work really well. And if my mom's out there, this is a fabric. I nearly took you out while at a yard sale trying to get my hands on it because I loved it so much. I've been using it for books for right now, but I have I have a nice little amount of it. It's it's just the sweetest little fabric. Now I need enough. This does not have to be perfect. You can use whatever works well for you. I'm gonna use scissors on the fabric. I would use the Ulfa knife and a ruler if I was cutting paper. I need enough so that I can glue it around the edges and then it'll hold and not be seen underneath my artwork. So whatever size you're doing, give yourself probably about an inch would work well, bigger around all four sizes. Now I can guesstimate this and just cut it because it doesn't, it does not have to be perfect. Perfect. I'm just going to chop across here. And something that you can do that's a lot of fun too is really look at your image if you have a pattern and try to determine what you would like on the pattern. So if you're not being stingy with your fabric, sometimes I get a little stingy. I'll just cut it and make it smart versus really thinking out. Like on this one, we can cut most of this girl. Nope, she'll be headless. I don't have enough to wrap it that way. So we can't do it that way, but we can probably get at least this bird in this one or this girl. I think we'll go for that bird on this one. How easily I'm distracted. And then we'll cut it. We're gonna try two of these tonight so that you can get a feel for it. I wanna see if matte medium works. I think it will. Fussy cutting, yes, fussy cutting. I see, I have a comment about fussy cutting. Anybody who has done any amount of sewing, when you, look at me, I can't cut and talk at the same time. <laughs> When you are picking what area of the fabric you want to cut out, it is fussy cutting. Yes, there is a use for all your scraps. You can now use them to make little books. It's like a whole new project that you didn't know you would totally fall in love with. Uh, we're going to need some ribbon. I'm just going to pull this because... I think it goes with it better. Well, I don't know. The blue looks pretty good. I've got blue here. And I don't need it like crazy long like I have. So I'm going to cut a piece in half. I'm just going to split it. This can be any ribbon, string, whatever, if you want to put a closure in here. So we need that. And we're ready to put our book, our first little book, together. We're going to use pH adhesive glue that is um, it's pH neutral so that it is, I'm losing my words, what is that called? Archival, it's archival glue. You can use, I've used, uh, Elmer's makes a fabric craft glue that works really well that I like a lot for these. And then we're gonna try matte medium on another book. I take this on here and Remember I said you need some scrap paper? Just take some scrap paper. 
because you don't want to get glue all over everything. So make sure that you have some old paper, newsprint, whatever you use for scrap paper in, and put that down. I want to make sure I don't glue my fancy side of the fabric. I'm going to turn it over and pick what direction that bird's flying that way. So I should probably leave it this way. So I'm going to turn my pretty fabric over. Pretty fabric is, is turned over here. Depending on what your workspace looks like, you might want to have you know, both pieces of fabric here, and both of these here. Just do what feels right so that you make the least amount of a mess. You're trying not to get glue on your outside cover, and you're trying not to make a total disaster. So I just take my glue. We'll do one of these at a time. Oh, no, we'll, we'll go. Let's get crazy. And I put my glue on here. And you can spread it around with your scrap mat board if you want, or a brush, whatever it takes. You just want to make sure that you have the glue all over your surface and hopefully not on your hands. I spread it all around. And I have a little extra on here, so I'm going to leave it on the brush. This is why you should probably work on one panel at a time versus, you know, let's do a speedy job, too. And then I flip this onto the fabric. I try to center it as best as I can. I just stick it on the center. Remember, this is the back side of of your fabric, your pretty size on the other side. So we're gonna turn it over. My hands are still luckily clean. I'm gonna turn it over. Now I could feel glue coming through. I'm not gonna panic about that, but I am gonna pay attention and make sure I put a clean sheet of craft paper down to turn this around so that I don't continue to get glue everywhere. I'm gonna lay that back down. I don't want too much glue coming through the fabric. This fabric's a little bit porous. And now I'm going to do this. I'm going to put, I'm actually using my other one and pulling this up from it. I'm going to take and do my edges first, and I'm going to go diagonally where that corner is. Do you see that? And I'm going to take this glue and this is where I kind of get crazy. I'm putting it all over the back and I'm pressing this down to make sure it, first I put it on this side of this. I still have a clean side so I can hold it. So I put a bunch of glue down and then I pressed it so that it is nice and crisp to the corner. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna do this side too. Bring this side in. If you're off and it's not perfectly square, do not agonize. It's fine, it'll turn out fine. It's gonna be under the paper and glued in. So not a real big deal. Put some extra on there. I'm spreading it over mashing down the back side and meeting that corner. And what happens is this is really slick. Now I've got a nice corner. I don't have a weird fold at my corner. I put a little more glue on here. Hold this up. And I'm using my brush to kind of pull it back and get it onto there. Voila, we have one side done. We're gonna do the other side. So to not torture you by watching glue dry, I'm spreading it all over. It's gonna get a little crazy with it. I'm gonna bring my corner in, mash it down, the glue. Make sure it's nice and you know, I've got my edge. Bring this one in. 
Mash it down. Make sure that glue is, is nice and in there. It's gonna help you a lot. There we go. Bring that edge over. So I'm folding this over. At this point, my hands have glue on them. It's okay, it's not the end of the world. But keep some baby wipes or some kind of clean wipes around so that if you get gluey hands, you can clean them up. And then you're gonna bring your other side in. I'm gonna bring this over, pull it down, And I like to put a little more glue on top just to make sure that fabric or paper is nice and saturated. We are going to cover the insides of both of these with our ends of our book. You will lose the outside of one side. So one side of your book will have two less pages to, to paint on than the other side. Just something to keep in mind. And you'll notice once you start making these. So look at that, we have this cute little cover. You might see a little, this will disappear, you won't see this, but we have a cute little cover. I make the use of my scrap paper because I'm frugal and also a little bit lazy because I don't always have enough right beside me. So I'm folding the glue side together. I'm moving, where's my other sheet that I cut? I cut just right. Not there. Oh, right in front of me. Here it is. There is my fabric. So pretty side down. Put your pretty side down. Take some glue. Stick it on here. Cover all that side. Oh, one side's covered. This can be cardboard too. You can use cardboard. It's gonna be thicker if it's cardboard. But really think about those sketchbooks you have or any thin cardboard laying around you can use for the insides of these because no one knows what's on the inside. Then I take it, gently rub. This is clean. So we're gonna come work on this piece now. I have glue on that. And we're going to do the same thing. I'll put a bunch of on here. Bring my corners in first. The corner. I try to mash it down and get glue in that fabric to flatten it a little bit. Bring this corner in. Do this corner. And when you're doing a bunch of these, you can get on a real roll. You'll be like, oh, I am so all over this. This is awesome. And you'll be really fast. More glue gobs, yes. Make it go faster. Okay. It's getting wild and crazy with the glue. Stick some in there. Stick my brush in there, pull it up, make sure it's, it's nice and, well, I'm, I'm a goner now, it's all over my fingers. So there's that side. Bring it up on this side. Make sure it's nice and glued to everything. Ideally, at this point, you may want to consider putting, just leaving it sit and dry. But for sake of time, I'm gonna just roll right through to the next step and show you what I do. It's possible that the weight and the glue, the reason I let it sit and dry is because if there is any glue on here, when I put paper on both sides of it, I don't want that paper to stick under the weights. 
when I glue the top and bottom on. So if you are doing this at home, at this point, take all your little pieces and just sit them aside. You can also get your strings ready. And let me kind of show you how these work. So the strings are gonna go in between the book and the paper. So here's, I wanna make sure that this is straight up and down. And there's my little bird flying. And unlike, it's not, it doesn't work how you think it would work. I know that there's my book. This side is gonna sit on this side and this is gonna sit on this. I want it to come around and tie in the front. So we want the glue strips, if I look at this one here, they come out the back like this, and it's dull side up. Let me show you. This one, and I want to make sure that they're a little off kilter. You can actually line them back up to do that. This one is going to go to the left, and it's going to be glued on this board. This one is going to be glued on this board and go to the right. And when they come out of the back, I want to make sure that they line up just so. Okay. And this is what I do. I've got to separate them because I don't want glue on the, the other parts of the stuff. And I just take and I glue a line and I get this all set up. So I'll glue this in here. I'll get my brush, which I just dipped in water. Probably a bad choice. Spread this out. And I glue this on because it helps me a lot to have that on there for when I put the book together and put it under weight. So I like to, to do these first. So that one already kind of glued on there, which is nice. And just, it gives it a little bit of extra reinforcement. All right, so pretend this is a cooking show and this is all dry and we just pulled it out and we're ready to put it all together. Pretty simple at this point. You've got two sides. You know that this one's gonna be here and this one's here. This is a little book. Remember I said you would lose two sides? You're gonna lose the sides that glue down. So be careful not to get, especially if it's watercolor paper, when you're painting this, be careful not to get your glue on here. It will act as a resist. Glue your paper. We're just gonna glue this up. And then I usually like to take, to protect my paper, I'll take a piece of uh, scrap paper, and you can even tear it up to, to fit. And then I'll do this first. I center it. Now there's no big uh, way I do this. I just want to center it over there. And I'm going to take this piece of scrap paper in here. In case any glue slips out, this will keep it from getting on your other pages. Uh, spray adhesive, I don't know if it'll be strong enough. It would for the cover, at least for the outside of the cover, spray adhesive would work really well. But I probably wouldn't use it for the inside because I don't, even Super 77, first it gets everywhere. It's hard to get off of anything and it's hard to manage. Um, so your first run for putting it on your cover, that outside to the board first, spray adhesive might work really well. It's so toxic to spray, not my favorite stuff. All right, so this is my other side. And when I put these together, I take this, I'm just gonna dump that in there, put my scrap paper down. And now I'm gonna put the other board on. Now, 
I do have the board below it to help me guide where it's going. So I sit that on there. I may lift it up and say, how does that look? It's a little crooked. Move it around a little bit to try to center it. Close it back up. And then at this point, even if it's dry, I take a piece of paper and I put the paper, make sure it's centered still, it is. I put the paper below my book and above my book. And then I take a whole collection of my heavy art books and I sit them so that it's smashing it down and I let it sit for 24 hours. So I will put on here, I have four books over here. I would probably put all four books. That's going to help smash that to, let to see some of my, my art books. There's Van Gogh and the Art of the Still Life. And these are gigantic, heavy books. So I take all of those and I put it under weight for 24 hours. We're going to do another quick one. I want to see how well gel medium works. So I'm going to get some of that out and I want to see how it works. And we'll just play with that and then we'll have that to test. After 24 hours, you remove the books. You can even part way, take newsprint or the paper out and switch it. There will be moisture from the glue in there. I'm gluing it so I'll find that it's wrinkled and I like to take that out. Now I'm in New Mexico and it's very dry here so we don't have to worry about mold or humidity. If you are somewhere that has a lot of moisture, I definitely would change the papers out to pull that moisture out of it from the glue so that you don't end up with that. Okay, let's see. I see uh we had a comment about spray adhesive. I talked a little bit about it, but there was a suggestion. Spray adhesive works great on fabric if the ends of the fabric are captive in a better adhesive. Once the fabric starts peeling on the edges, it's all downhill. Oh, so yeah, the outside is great for spray adhesive, but once you wrap it around, I'd recommend you switch to some kind of a glue and we're, I'm gonna hope that matte medium works as well. I'm just putting this book of your weight over here on the other shelf behind it. And then I'm going to get one that I had set up and I'm going to get some fancy paper. This is a longer book. This one was a 30 inch piece of paper. So do you see how many folds we have, we have a lot of nice stuff to work with. And I thought this long format would be really kind of fun. They used a, a long format, I'm close up my PVA glue, and I'm gonna get my other stuff out. We need two pieces to wrap. So I'm just gonna make this easy on myself and cut this piece in half. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the four inch mark. I'm just gonna cut this in half. Since it's paper, I don't use the scissors. I'll just use a knife. Boom, just like that. And then it's a little long, and I really pushed it on this one. That's, oh no, I didn't, I'm okay. I think I gotta cut down one side of this. I'm going to cut my fun deco edge off, but that's okay. I'm going to come in here and just stick the ruler in here and do a fun guesstimate. Because it's, it's going to be under the paper, so it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. It's okay. So there's my two pieces that, remember, these are so cool. Look at those tigers in there. Can you see them? Aren't they fun? Okay, so we've got our pieces. We've got two map boards. This is hot pressed watercolor paper. I like it because it's heavy. This is a soft Fabriano sheet. 
it folds really nice. Part of it is because it doesn't have the cold press dents in it, it folds really nice. It's great to draw on and paint on. So I kind of get a two for one and it holds up really well. So I take that guy, got my paper covers. We'll throw some green on this one and maybe make these a little longer and then we can cut them afterwards. You can cut really long strips of ribbon and then chop them later. So we've got those at the ready. And then I need some scrap paper. So put the sheets on here. And just like before, face down, so pretty side down. This is a really nice other side, but we're not gonna use that. I like, I like the tigers. And this time I'm going to try the matte medium. This is just golden soft gel medium. It doesn't matter that it's gloss because it's going to be in the inside, so it doesn't really matter. Decoupage may work. I haven't tried that one. And this is a brand new. I ran out of my other gel medium. So, ooh, this is exciting. I get to open it in a jar, maybe. Maybe I might have to cut the corner of it and do that. We're just going to cut a section out. Ooh, messy. Messy, messy. And then I'm going to clean my brush. I have a water jar over here, so I'm going to clean my brush a little bit. And I'm just going to use that little... Every drop, right? We're just going to use every drop. So I'm going to paint this. And I get to be in here a little better than that. Now let's see if I can get the lid off partially. And I'm just going to paint this and then flip it over, smooth it out. We'll see how well this, this one works. Now I think for the sake of the paper needing to work a little better, I'm just gonna paint right onto the paper, the matte medium, and make sure I get around those sides. And let's start by folding in. This paper is nice and thin, it folds really nice. There's my side. I'm just using the brush and I'm going along the edge to press that down. Presses it really nice. And I'm coming in here. Pressing it down. And then look how pretty that is. So this the paper I have noticed, you will get a crisper, cleaner edge. It's really, really nice to work with a thinner paper. This is an art paper that I bought at the art store, specifically for making books. I'm just gonna spread this all around so that it's there. Flip this over. Again, just pushing with my brush. It's those edges really nice. Working around. Coming over on this edge, folding it in. You see how that's not square right there? That's okay, it doesn't matter. It's gonna be on the inside of the book. What we wanna make sure is that the cover is wrapped nicely around the whole book. And that you don't see those edges. This is really what we're going for. So really pretty. This this uh, this worked out so far really well with the gel medium. And the paper, it worked just beautifully. And there's there's your book cover. Just lovely, great little edges. There's the back. 
And then I set that aside on a clean piece of paper so that I don't get it very dirty. If I don't trust myself, I fold these up. This is writing on the other side, so I won't, who knows what's on there. I'll just get rid of it. But I have more. I brought lots today. And if you have a big jar of gel medium, don't do what I'm doing where I just kind of left it open. I did try not to expose the whole thing, but you're, I have been known to walk out of the studio and leave the gel open for hours and lose a chunk of it. So I usually try to wrap myself into wise ways and close my lid. I'm gonna make sure it's nice and on there. Same thing, just all the way around. Grabbing the gel medium, painting over the side. I want it under and on top on this inside, so I paint the edges, put it in there, then I go over and I crease it with the brush. The brush gets in there really nice to crease it. I'm gonna come in this side, line it up, flatten it out, crease it. I have not yet created a book with a heavy, thick paper on it. Like I've used even, uh, you can get art making paper with different patterns on it. You know, like Christmas themes or birthday themes. I did one and I can't find, I lost my little book. I did this really cool one with sprinkles all over it from one of those craft sheets. That worked great, but I haven't, other than that weight, which is a little heavier than paper, I haven't tried it with a heavy paper. So I'm not sure how well or how hard it will be to wrap around your cover. But something to keep in mind. Not that I wouldn't try it. It's just I, I usually end up finding something that I like that's thin paper or, or a fabric. And I also haven't tried like thick fabric, like something upholstery. Now see on this one, I got out of order and I did that long side first. It doesn't matter, it's fine. Let's go in here and the mat. And this, and then the same as before, I would take my Sheets. Get a new sheet of paper. This is and glue them in, and it is shiny side out. Wait. Yes, shiny side out. So I put this on here. The more you put inside of it, the more strength it'll have from you tearing out. Like if I lined this up on here, if I lined this one up on here, and I put it right here and glued it in, you don't have a lot of strength. Did I lose my green thing? I lost it. So I put it as far as I can over. And I'm jogging these also so that um, one's a little higher from the center and one's a little lower from the center. That's too far. That's better. I want to make sure that it's all the way across, but that the paper is going to cover it. And then just like the other one, I would take my sheet. And glue this side. Make sure I don't get it on anything on the other side. That will be, it will act like a resist, especially with this stuff. 
might even glue my sheet to the other thing. And I think this is going to work really well. It may work well because it's paper. I don't know. Well, not moving around a little bit. And we're going to press it on there. Let's stick a piece of paper in there. Go over to this side. Put my glue on it. For my gel medium, this is just gel medium we're using right now. Extra on there. And remember, highly recommend that you let your ends dry before doing this so that you don't just glue it to the papers that you put over and under it. So there's that. Looks a little crooked to me, so I'm gonna straighten it out a little bit. Does not like moving around. We'll say that. Did not like getting wiggled. But we're gonna go with it. And then put some paper in between. I'm gonna get this so that I don't have text offset because it's a printed piece of paper. There's that. So line up pretty well. And then just like the other one, we put it under weight. And that's it. I have not used Mod Podge for this. However, I think it would work. And I think it would work really well. So if you have Mod Podge and you want to try it, definitely go for it. I'm also going to try plain old Elmer School Glue because I think that has a lot of potential too. I don't know how archival it is, but if you're making a book for yourself or just a little journal, I don't know that you need it to be archival. If you're making an art book, you definitely want it to be archival. So just some, some other stuff to think about. And then one more time, I take extra paper. I put it on the top and I put it on the bottom. And then I put the whole thing under weight. So there's my thing. And then this will go under books. And that's it. Do you, you guys had some really good questions tonight. Do you have any other thoughts or questions before we go and get a snack, late night snack? Thank you guys for joining me tonight. I hope that you learned something new, that you're inspired, that you do something really fun and make some fun books. And um, I just really appreciate all of you taking the time out in your evening to, to sit and watch me babble about making a craft. So have a great week. Tune in Friday. Follow me if you can. Subscribe or sign up to get notifications. I will be on Friday Night Dinos on Friday, and we will be painting on black paper with a blue dinosaur that eats cookie monsters. Have a great week. Talk to you later.